everybody. Um, long time, no broadcast. Uh, we got Matt Marks on, the man, the myth, the legend. Hello, everyone. Contending uh, for 2022, which would be a repeat salesperson of the year. Having a great year. Yeah, uh, you know, I'm, I'm just feeling pretty blessed right now. Just yes. Keep hard and good things happen. That's it, man. It's that's how the real estate business goes. It's just uh, do what you say you're going to do. And uh, anyway, so today and please forgive my setup here for anybody that's watching. This is not a uh, sports cast or a gaming convention, um, but my regular headphones are not working. So today I want to talk to Matt, who is the expert on the city market in Panama, Panama City, Panama, obviously specifically about Costa Leste, but I think that, you know, some of the things we talk about can be kind of broadly applied to what's going on in the market in general. So Matt Marks, uh, the million dollar question is, how is the market right now? Uh, gosh, I, I think we've seen a huge turnaround. Um, if you had asked me that same question a month ago, mm. I'd say we're still in a buyer's market. And then in the last three weeks, we've seen a lot of, uh, a lot of expats coming down, making an unseasonably late trip down to Panama and with, you know, being priced out of their local markets are coming down here ready to make a decision. Yeah, the U.S. is we're seeing it so hot up north uh, in terms of prices that, like you said, people are getting priced out. Now, would you say it's still it's still a buyer's market at this point? It's yeah, it's definitely still a buyer's market, but trending in the opposite direction. Um, we have people coming down It may be their first trip, even their second trip coming down and they're making decisions right away within the first few days. They, they've come down, they've done a lot of research on Panama already, and they're coming down just to make sure that, you know, it's everything they they've read about. And once they get here, they see it is and they're and even more so and are making their decisions right here in the first week. Uh, that's cool. I mean, you know, a lot of people do research for years. As we know, uh, we go back and forth with clients um, for quite some time before they actually come down. But uh, so, what are the what are the main reasons? What are the main reasons you're seeing now versus say like a year or two ago? Like, what's changed? Yeah, a lot of it is just the cost of real estate back home for them. Uh, you know, coming from Canada, United States, where prices have soared in the you know since the start of COVID, really. Um, there's not much inventory in those areas, you know, in the two countries in general. And what we're seeing here is, is they're saying, Hey, I want to come down to Panama. The cost of living is much cheaper than what I'm used to in New York or Florida or even Toronto. And they can afford a better lifestyle on a, on a fixed income. Yeah, no, I, I would agree, man. All of those reasons. Um, and you know, guys, just so you know, these conversations, obviously Matt and I work together, uh, these are not scripted. He has no idea what I'm going to ask him. I just say, Hey, why don't you hop on? Let's, let's go and tell the people what's going on in the market. So, yeah. And, and I would actually add to that in terms of what's different in the last year and a half to two years, people looking at Panama is it's, it's almost always been a factor of people getting pushed outside of their country uh, and kind of pulled to Panama, whether it's, you know, political turmoil, whether it's, you know, currency differences, whether it's like you're saying, like an overheated market. So yeah, I mean, Panama is definitely still kind of on, on the, on the come up, I guess you could say in terms of pricing, like it's been, what would you say? It's kind of prices have almost been flat, uh, if not down in the city in the last, what, like five or six years almost. Yeah. Um, probably about the last five years, they were flat and about probably about 18 months ago, maybe a little longer than that, the prices started to drop and, what I've seen with the sellers that I work with is they kind of keep their asking price around the same. They just want to keep some room for negotiation, but people are being a lot more willing to negotiate. And then what I've seen in the last two or three weeks are they're not needing to negotiate as much. Prices are starting to trend upwards. And, you know, if, if you're asking one price, you may have to negotiate off of five or $10,000 where previously you were coming off, you know, 20 or $25,000 off of your asking price. Yeah. And I bet that's a, a function of, you know, they're getting more offers, right? They're showing the property more. So sellers ultimately are kind of getting a little bit of confidence in terms of, uh, yeah, the, the market's starting to stiffen up, which is great. So what's selling? What, what are you seeing selling right now? I'm seeing it all over the, all over the map. 
Um, in the last two weeks, you know, we recently signed a contract for a penthouse in Costa del Este that was listed at over a million dollars. And then a few few uh, deals between the five hundred to eight hundred thousand dollar range, and then a lot of investors coming down, just looking for you know good value as far as you know being around one hundred fifty thousand thousand dollars. So it's really just it's it's checking all the boxes all over the market. Okay, can you still find like good values in Costa del Este? Uh oh, yeah, I think it froze. Sorry. Can you still find good values in Costa del Este? Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, we're working with a seller right now who's front line on the water uh, and the price is below $2,000 a meter, which is just unheard of in, in that market. Yeah. And that's probably a bigger, bigger property, right? Like two, 300 square meters kind of thing. Nailed it on the head. It's about 260 <laughs> square meters, three that's bedrooms. A big range. Yeah. Well, you're still in there. Uh, yeah. yeah. But 260 <laughs> square meters three bedroom three and a half bath plus a uh, uh you know maids quarters and you know to find something like that under six hundred thousand, you know in the in previous years was just unheard of this property is listed at five hundred twenty five thousand. okay got it so there's definitely still some deals out there so what what are the main reasons like i mean the, the penthouse you just sold tell us about the buyer what he's doing in panama does he live here is it just an investment for him what's the story on somebody that buys a million dollar property yeah, well, actually, this one is a Panamanian buyer. It's a Panamanian family with uh, three children, and they wanted to be closer to where their friends and family are living now. So they're moving from El Congrejo and bringing the whole family to uh, Costa del Este. Okay, so local buyer. I mean, that's that's all. That's kind of the ultimate sign of confidence. There's a lot of money floating around Panama right now um, with just like the U.S. I mean, obviously, we're on the dollar. I think another kind of cool Thing about Panama is that we haven't experienced as much inflation in terms of grocery stores, gasoline, certainly not real estate uh, that the U.S. has. And I don't really know why that is. Like maybe it's because Panama doesn't necessarily uh, provide as much social relief, I guess you could say, like the, the, the social programs like welfare and whatnot, um, where people are being incentivized not to work in the States versus in Panama. People are taking what they can get but there's still dollars floating around because obviously we're on the dollar. So I think that's, that could be a long-term trend. And speaking of long-term trends, Matt, what do you think? Where do you think we'll be in bust out your crystal ball say <laughs> in a year? Like, you know, you've been in Panama uh, for about as long as I have 12 years, something like that. 13. I don't even know. Yep. After 10 years, it's kind of icing on the cake, but how long have you been in Panama? Yeah, it's been 12 years now. I celebrated my 12 year anniversary earlier this month. Cool. So yeah, I mean, you've got some perspective. Um, what do you think? Where, where will Panama be in a year? Why will Panama be different in a year? Well, you know, speaking strictly on the economy, you know, Panamanian economy tends to be insulated because of the canal. The canal is always operating even during the pandemic. It may have slowed down, but it never came to a halt. People are always right. shipping goods across the globe. Um, and, and you kind of hinted at it earlier. You know, I was focused on the North American market being overheated, but the South American market, we're seeing a lot of Peruvians coming into the country uh, due to un, you know, an unstable government. Uh, same thing with Colombia. Venezuelans are still flocking to the country. So we're getting a lot of uh, expats from both continents coming into Panama. And as far as, you know, the multinational corporations, as they start to, you know, gear up again and bring more and more uh, executives down to the country, they're making Panama their Latin American hub because of our proximity to both continents, North and South America. And with Copa, you can catch a direct flight to just about any major city in either continent. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I, I agree. The South American market cannot be overlooked, especially in a place like Costa del Este, which I would say is still more Latino than it is, you know, North American slash European. But that's changing, too. I mean, you go to the mall. What do you think? You walk into a restaurant for those people who haven't been to Costa del Este in a while. You know, you go to uh, that mall there. What's the new mall? I always forget. Town Center. Town Center, claro. Um, so you go to town center, you're at a full restaurant, there's 100 people. Where do you think those 100 people will be from? Give us a pie chart. Gosh, I mean, it, it's a real melting pot. I, yeah. uh, 
I'd say 25% are going to be from U.S. or Canada. Yeah. Um, and then you're going to see a, a good mix of, I see a lot of Colombians, Venezuelans. Latino. Um, even, yeah, Panamanians, local Panamanians that live in this area. Because of the proximity, not just close to the Leste, but you also have Santa Maria right there, where a lot of the upper class, wealthy Panamanian families are moving to. They, you know, they like the idea of having that oasis inside of the city. But keep going with the pie chart. I'm curious. And let's separate locals um, from, you know, like let's separate Panamanians because there's Venezuelans and Colombians that have lived in Panama for 15 years who consider themselves both, you know, like, but let's call them, you know, South Americans. So what, what percentage do you think? So we got 25% North American, which is obviously U.S. and Canada in a restaurant with 100 people in Costa Leste. Um and then what, like 25% Panamanian or yeah, more? Probably, yeah, probably put a little higher, maybe you yeah. know, 30, 35% Panamanian. Yeah. Typically, you get a lot of large families. And then the balance, you know, would be your Colombians, Venezuelans, and now the Peruvians are starting to trickle in. Yeah. And then what about Europeans? Like 5%, 10%? Yeah, I'd probably put it around 5 or 10%. I would agree with that. Um, a lot of Swiss nationals here. And lately, out of nowhere, I'm seeing a lot of German families coming to Panama. Yeah, yeah, I bet you're seeing that. So Matt also runs our beaches division. Uh, if you're just joining us, Matt Marks is a 2020 salesman of the year. Looking at 2021, you never know. Uh, it's neck and neck. But uh yeah, no, we're, we're talking about Costa Leste, uh, but we're also trying to get some indicators or some, I guess, generalizations about what's going on in Panama. So what should people be watching for? Like, let's say they're sitting on the sidelines. What advice would you give for somebody maybe looking for a deal? And then we'll talk about what advice would you give to a seller? Yeah, a lot of the conversations I'm having with my buyers, if they're here or if they're not, is if you find the property you like, well, let's start negotiating on it. Don't wait for it to move on price. We're seeing a lot of properties just jump off of the market right now. Uh, specifically talking about developers, I had a situation just this week where the person visited two weeks ago. They came back to go see the property again this week off the market. It was, you know, it was already bought and paid for. So if you find what you're looking for, make an offer, start to negotiate and and get deals done. And, and I'm finding it on both sides of the coin, even buyers, buyers that they're making offers, but they're making multiple offers to multiple properties to see who's willing to negotiate, see if they could find that deal. Yeah, I agree. And, you know, I would add to that um, or yeah, I would add to that something Matt said earlier, which is properties can sit on the market for a long time. The reason being is this market is not very transparent in terms of your seller you might not know that, hey, you're way overpriced unless you're talking to your agent or have some other inside information, maybe like property manager is aware of multiple units having sold in the building. So properties tend to be, can sit for a long time because they're overpriced. Doesn't mean that the seller is not willing to cut a very interesting deal, but you just got to approach them. And I think on the sales side, um, you know, if you're a seller saying, man, how am I going to, how do how do I get in front of these Peruvians? How do I get in front of these Americans? Obviously, you know, Panama equity, we're talking to all of them, we're in front of them. Um, but you've got to make sure you're priced right, because if you don't price it right, you're not going to get the calls. Uh, and if you don't get the calls, you don't get the showings. And as we all know, you know, the person has to come in and fall in love with the property. And that's when you get an offer. So yeah, I mean, what do you think? What other advice would you give to sellers, Matt, um, who are just trying to sell their properties? I mean, you really, you, this one thing you always stress with us in, within the office is you have to be priced right. Mm -hmm. If you're not priced right, you're just not going to get phone calls. And it's a numbers game. You want to get as many phone calls, as many visits as possible. And of course, you know, the 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 dream for everyone is to have multiple offers and, and start bidding buyers against each other. You know, it, I think back to a situation uh, just a few months ago, I had a seller in El Congrejo that was listed for you know, a year or two with other, with other agencies. And he wanted to list at 225 to have room for negotiation. I told him, Hey, you know, you're hoping to sell around 205. So why don't we list it at 206 listed at the right price? Didn't call me back for about two weeks. I thought I really, really upset him. 
finally calls me back. He says, you know what? Let's try it your way. I've tried it my way for long enough. Try it your way for 30 days. Let's see what we can do. And within 30 days, we had competing offers and we closed at 205 with a cash deal. I love it. Nice work, man. I, 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 I think I actually remember that deal. Um, but uh, yeah, man. Well, listen, Matt, good insight. Uh, I think that uh, people that aren't in Panama uh, are kind of getting a sense of what's going on. And that's that's the only way you can do it, guys, because unfortunately there is not a robust uh database of closed sales. You sort of have to rely on what you see from developers going off their inventory, what we're closing in house, what we're talking to the neighbors, property managers, building administrators, other real estate agents. There is an MLS. It's getting going, um, but it's not quite there yet in terms of full statistics on the full market. It's just a small little slice. But uh, what do you think, Matt? What else can we add to this convo for the people? Yeah, just expanding upon what you said, another good source of knowledge is speak to your agent and make sure that they're plugged in with other agencies and other agents in the market that may, you know, even if they're working with another company, it's very important for your agent to have kind of that, that circle of, of eight, other salespeople, other brokers that they work with. I know myself, I, you know, I have a circle of about five people that I can reach out to and I know that you'll get reliable information on what's happening in the market. Yeah, definitely. Um, that's the key. And Panama is such a small place. Uh, fortunately, we're never more than two degrees away from, you know, the president even. It's nice. It's a nice place to operate. So, all right, cool. Well, thank you, Matt Marks. And thank you, everybody, for watching. Uh, feel free to chat after the broadcast and we usually jump in and answer questions. So thanks, everybody. Have a great day. Thank you, Matt. My pleasure.